Hey, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And there's an update to Photoshop in October 2014, and there's a whole bunch of new features. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through my five favorite features. Now, there's other things I'm not going to touch in, such as uh, improvements in 3D printing, uh, performance improvement with the Mercury graphics, and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with my first one right now. And you'll see this if you go under the uh, window menu here. And under Window, you'll see Libraries. And yes, we have Creative Cloud Libraries. So what is this? This is something that I've been wanting in Photoshop for the longest time. It's the ability to take images and different things and save them out into a library. And then we can reuse this library over and over again. And it also syncs through Creative Cloud. So this is just awesome. So why don't I show you kind of how it works. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm just going to enter my document here. I'm just going to place something. Let's just choose a... Uh, place let's place a uh, embedded and i'm just going to grab a logo here i know i've got my uh, logo here in illustrator so here's a photoshop cafe logo and i'm just going to drop this in here maybe make it a little bigger and then just hit the enter key to apply it now you'll notice this comes in as a smart object on a new layer and now when we've got our library here it, i've got this set to default you can actually create different types of libraries in here uh, and you can just click here to create a new library so why don't we do that right now we'll just call this one test and then notice that this little icon now is uh, enabled. And if I click on that, what it does is it enables this here as a layer. And now it's in the library. So if I want to reuse it, I can simply drag this out. And I can drag it out again. And as you can see, I can continue to reuse this. And, uh, and it's great. And because these are Illustrator files, if I was to double click on here, it would actually launch Illustrator and let me go in and, and edit the original. So this is fantastic. What else can we do in here? Well, if we want to save colors, notice our background color there is selected. We can click on there and we'll save black. Why don't we grab some other colors? I don't know. Let's grab the color of our logo, for example. Click on there. Now we can save that color. Let's grab an orange because I know that's a, another color I like to use in Photoshop Cafe. In fact, why don't I use all my colors? There we go. And let's grab a lighter orange. Not that one. Uh, where are we actually it's that one right there and I'm just gonna click OK and notice at any time I can just click there and I can add these foreground colors into the little color section here and notice that those are the foreground colors there if I select these it'll change my foreground color now to whatever I've got saved there in that library so this is great so you can create a library for each client each project or a corporate one which is what I'm doing here I'm basically creating that so what about font what if I grab a font here and uh, maybe I want to do something like a watermark? Why don't I set this color to black? And I'm going to do my little watermark that I like to do. And I'm just going to do like option G for the copyright sign. And I'll do this Colin Smith. And then I put a little pipe in there and in photoshopcafe.com. And this is actually what I use typically for my um, watermarks when I do photographs. So there we go, I've got that little watermark and I have to type that in each time. So what if I just click here and I decide, I could go here and I could grab the text style. So if I do that, notice it saves that type style. But what if I wanna actually grab the type that I've been using? Well, if I click the graphics icon, notice that right there, it now grabs the entire thing. So if I wanna click and drag this in here and I wanted to use this type as a watermark, notice it's there and I can just reuse it. If I want to scale it, all I got to do is just click on here. It's going to give me a little warning. I'm going to click OK. And now I can um, rescale this, do whatever I want to do. In fact, let me change the size of it here. And notice that it's just beautiful text that's fully editable right now. So you can see that in the library there. We've got that, so we can do these different things. What about if we want to get kind of crazy? Uh, let's create a new layer here. And I'm just going to put something on Maybe we'll do some kind of a layer style on it. So I'm just going to create a shape. And I'm going to go into the layer styles here. And uh, why don't we do a glossy kind of a thing to that. That'll, that'll be kind of nice. So let's do a bevel and emboss. We're going to move it over here. Oh, by the way, the defaults have also been changed in the layer styles. They're a lot more useful than they used to be. So I'm just going to turn this up. Like, notice right now you can't really see uh, a lot of cool stuff happening. Let me go into the contour here because these always look better with anti-alias turned on and uh, and also to play around a little bit with those contours makes them look better. We're going to go to our blending options. We're going to turn down our, keep our opacity up, but we're going to turn our fill opacity down so we get a little glossy shape there. Uh, maybe play for a different gloss contour. Let's play around a little bit. 
just kind of, you know, trying to get the general idea here, you know, something that looks glossy, not trying to be too perfect. In fact, why don't we put a little drop shadow on it here? So we're going to go down and choose drop shadow and I'll drag it out a little and we're just going to soften it off a little bit and maybe drop the opacity down. Okay, so we've kind of got that little style there. So now if we click on here, effects, what we've done is we've actually saved that particular style. So at any time I can click and drag this out here when I'm ready to use it. In fact, why don't I do something now? Let's create a different shape. Let's grab a uh, custom shape tool and we'll just go up here and we'll just do one of these little guys here. Awesome. And then we click on the style there and now that's also saved. So you might not use the style as much as you're going to use things such as the colors and uh, you know the type and uh, logos and things like that. Those are really useful. So at this point here, we've saved that out. We can actually click here if we want and we can sync this up. Notice it says that all libraries are up to date, but we can sync that if we want. We can display it in different ways. And also, if we've got other libraries in here, if you look under here, we can see uh, we're creating the library. I've got the test up here. We can go to the PSC library. There's another one I created earlier. You can see some different shapes in there. And these libraries, once again, as I said, they can be synced. And we can also uh, create multiple ones for different things. So that's really great and super useful. All right, so what else do we have? Let's look at another thing that I'm really super excited about, because if you've ever had to space things around and do any kinds of layout, guides, you know how it is with a guide, you click the guide and you drag it and you grab the next guide and you drag it, you try to line these up. And here's a little tip too, if you hit the option key, you can change the orientation while you're dragging these. Notice that. Um, but what if we wanted to, you know, maybe line these up with this particular logo and right now I'm trying to get that just right. It's a little bit of work. So what if we go up here and now we go into the view menu and then we go under the guides and what if we create new guides from shape? Well, what we want to do is first of all select that shape. Notice we've got it selected there. And then I'm going to go under the view menu and now I'm going to go new guides from shape. And not there. That's actually, uh, sorry about that. Let's go back again. New guides from shape. There we go. So notice now it creates those guides directly from that shape now, and I can click and drag these and continue to move them if I want. So the other option, which I kind of already gave away a little bit, is if we go under here, we've got the new guide layout. Now this is super awesome. We've got presets. We could do a column. We can do 16, 12 column, whatever we want. These are the presets. Here's one I made as a three and three. So here's where it gets really cool. We can actually set a gutter in between. So let's do a 20 pixel gutter and we'll do a 20 pixel gutter in there. And notice what we've got here is we've got these guides are set right now. We could, you know, if we want to divide this into three, if we want to divide it into five and you'll have a little space in between them, you can do that with the gutter. You can actually just click and drag here to change that as you want to do it live. Or if you want to perfectly just divide your page up, we can actually just take the gutter down to nothing. Notice we also have the option to clear the existing guides because if I have that off, notice the guides we put there before will remain. If we turn it on, it's actually going to replace them. And we also have the option to set a margin. Right now the margin's off and it's just it's dividing the page right now. Let's divide it into, I don't know, let's do into half would be two. And why don't we do that right now? There we go. So that's the exact center of the document right there. So all these different things that we did to find the center of the document don't really matter anymore. It's much easier. So we can set the number of columns. We can set our gutter in here if we want to, you know, perfectly space these. And the margin, what it does is we'll take away from the edge. So if we want to do a margin here, we can do it that way. And I'm just doing that, uh, dragging these one at a time there. And we're just setting our margin. So obviously, you know, you probably set them something like 20 and then just hit the tab key. And then we can start to um, set up these guides and then we can design or even work on our photographs or whatever we want to do with these nice guides that are going to help us. And they also help us arrange and lay out these different things. Well, that brings me to the next new feature, which is awesome. As you probably know, if you hit the command key, that would be control on Windows and click on something, we can select it. And then we can line that up and we can, you know, do that. We can do the same thing. We can hit there and we can select it. So here's the thing that's new, is if you click the control key, watch up here. Notice the auto select is on. As soon as I release it, it goes away. So the cool thing about that is if I keep that on now, I can just simply just click these different elements 
and I can start to just move these around on the page. Notice this just very, very quickly and easily. Whatever I select now becomes active. And I'm just aligning these up with our new grid here. And see, that's just almost like working in Illustrator now. It's that easy to move things around and do different things. I don't know what I would do with this rectangle, by the way. It's hideous looking, but uh, there we go. There you have it. And notice this is just so quick and easy to click and drag these things around. So that's another fantastically exciting feature inside of the new update in Photoshop. All right, let me show you something else, which is maybe a little bit different. I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to grab the pen tool here just to create a little bit of a path. Now, this is something that I'm going to leave to your artistic abilities to use or abuse. And what we have now is the ability to create uh, a descriptive pattern, which is going to look like flames. So uh, let's have a look and see what we can do with the flames. We're going to go under the filter, and it's actually been a while since there's been some new filters in Photoshop. And under Render, you're going to see an option called Flames. So, okay, let's turn this on. It's going to take a second for this to come up, and I'm just going to go for the default. So it's going to take a second. There we go. There's a default. Notice it's following our path. So you have to have a path. Uh, we can change the length of these flames, make them a little bit higher. Let's do that. And let's randomize them a little bit, because if we do that, it's going to definitely look more realistic. And we can play around with the random, random randomization of the width and the angle a little bit. Uh, let's bring the angle back a little bit there. So we've got, you know, something that's kind of looking interesting here. And uh, if you don't want it to go at an angle, just put it straight up and down that way. And you'll see there's all kinds of different things that you can play around with to apply your flames. So let's have a look here. And it's going to take a second here for Photoshop to do this. And there we go. We've got some interesting looking flames. Now you can play around with these two of the smudge tools and different things like that and start to use these to blend them in. They're actually pretty good. I'm actually surprised um, how good these actually are. And if I was to put it against a darker background, obviously it's going to look better. So let me put it against a the black. There we go. Definitely looks a lot better. So what else could you do with this? Well, I'm going to grab this path again. Notice it's still using the same path there. There's our path. Oops. Turn that off. And uh, there's our path. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the layer. I'm going to make sure there's a new layer selected. And let's go under these. I'm going to choose the filter. And once again, I'm going to go under the render menu. And I'm going to grab the flame. So there's a lot of different things you can do with these. So if you don't want to just make it look like flame, we can choose a custom color. So here we go. Let's grab more of a bluish kind of a color here. Uh, maybe give it a little bit stronger blue. There we go. That looks pretty good. And uh, let's play around with the length. Play around with the width. And as you can see, now we get some different uh, kind of things going on with this. So I'm just playing around with the interval. Let's uh, play with these. And, uh, and as you see, you can start to get some really interesting effects with these. Here we go. Let's apply that. So, you know, trying different colors and different types of techniques, you don't just have to use it for flames. You can also get some really interesting uh, kind of light uh, effects or, you know, fractal kind of effects there. So um, that's pretty cool. So here's another thing. What if we want to put all of these in groups? I'm going to show you another feature. So I'm just going to select some of these, and I'm just hitting Command-G, by the way. That would be Control-G on Windows to put these into groups. So notice we've got these groups. And uh, one of the things, I don't know if you ever used groups before, but one of the things that's a pain is when you open and close these groups one at a time. So if you hold down the Control key, that would be Command on Mac, and click on one of these, it will actually open all the disclosure triangles at once, and then once again, click again to collapse them all at once. So that was my last tip. So once again, I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. Don't forget, head over to photoshopcafe.com for a whole bunch of really great free tutorials and premium tutorials. And also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube because I'm always posting new videos and particularly, you know, stuff that's coming out, uh, cutting edge stuff like this. You know, this is like just announced right now and, and here it is for you. So uh, don't forget to check out photoshopcafe.com forward slash CC for all the latest stuff in Photoshop CC. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the cafe.